On this style fly, we're gonna use a far smaller Waddington shank. This is a 20 millimeter. I'm gonna start where the two pieces of wire meet. I'm gonna bind them so they won't move at all. They won't twist. And I'm gonna go back over, if you can see that, where the gap is. Right there, I'm gonna bind it down about 100,000 times because we don't ever want this to move. And I just break the extra thread off. No need to even cut it. Right in here, and we can put in a bunch of thread because we're going to cover up the gap with something else. Now this comes in spools or it comes in these wire chunks like this. This is just a large mylar flash, basically. And what we're gonna use this for is basically to cover up our thread. You could have this, you could not have this, and I don't think the fish is going to notice. But I notice, and I don't like to see thread on anybody's flies, unless it's on the head. So I'm going to tie it in like this. And what you do is most things take three to five wraps to bind. And I'm going to just take the thread up to where I want it to end. And I'm going to take this, I'm just going to real carefully wrap over itself so that it goes over that. The gap is now covered and it covers a thread and it gives it a dark hue behind this mylar tinsel. Wrap it up like so, bind it down and we'll cut it off. So we have a nice base, cover our thread, everything's starting out well. We're going to have a base to support all the materials. The large profile in the front is kind of the signature move of the intruder. I'm going to start out with a dubbing ball. I'm just going to take and put a bulky amount of this, what do we got, STS Trilobal Kingfisher Blue. Again, all these colors can be up to you. This is just a pattern that I will have tied a bunch of times and I tie it fairly quickly. So what I do is I bind the dubbing that I pulled out at the top. I lick my fingers and I just start twisting my thread. And it gives it the same kind of deal. The more better I taper it, the less chunks there are. And now I have like a chenille dubbing rope, kind of. And again, you're gonna wanna go back and back over the top so these things bind each other down. And again, we're going up. We're not trying to go forward or back. We're trying to go up. So in a very small area now, I've made a bump. And that bump is gonna be the base for everything. I can, you can vary, you can play with this because a lot of materials are gonna be packed against it. Sometimes, you know, you're gonna want maybe a fly that stays like the size of a half dollar in the water. Obviously, you're gonna have to have a bigger dubbing boat. You're gonna have to have a bigger base, like a building. In this, I'm gonna use, uh, this is just standard tail Arctic Fox. And it's blue, it doesn't really matter what color it is. I'm just gonna cut a nice chunk of it out here. And holding the tips in your fingers like so, you can just pull on the butt end and you can take a lot of that loose crap out. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to look at how much material I have and I want to tie in exactly in the middle and there's a reason. We're not gonna cut hardly anything on this at all. We're just gonna let it go because this base you're going to see what's going to happen. I'm going to tie it on the top, right in the middle, two, three, and I'm going to start pulling it apart like this. Bam, I'm going to fold it back, and I'm going to bind it down right in front. I'm going to flip the fly over. Again, and what I just did there, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to tie in another, just kind of obnoxious chunk of this stuff. And this is where the fly is going to get its life. Mm, close. Mm -mm -mm. There we go. Now this looks horrible. And that's exactly the way we want it to look. Like so. <coughs> Again, we can kind of fill it in as we go and that kind of thing, but this is what we want. We're gonna bind it down, 
Put a lot of thread wraps in the front of it here. Get it to smooth back just a little bit. Because this fly that I like to tie, I like to have a huge silhouette in the water. Huge. I want it to actually fish where it's about the size of a quarter. Now, my favorite color combination is copper and blue. I don't actually like to use a lot of flash. I like to give the presumption that I've used a lot of flash without actually using it. So, I'm going to take a good size clump of this. Good size being, I don't know, eighth of an inch around. Not too much. You can see there's not actually that much material in there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab it about in the middle. I'm going to lick it so it sticks. So I can now, you know, you could now set it on the table if you wanted, anything like that. And where I licked it, I'm going to kind of flatten it out on my thumb and my forefinger so it's spread out. And I'm going to tie it right on the side at 90 degrees. I'm going to put that in there. I'm going to bind it down. Again, I like to bind everything with about three wraps. Three. That's it. It's not going anywhere. And I'm going to fold this, just like this, back over 90 degrees to the side I just tied in. That's it. Now there's going to be a gap here and a gap here. So it only actually takes two clumps of flash to do half the fly. You didn't have to get too crazy. Um, you'll see if you play with it, sometimes you'll need a little more fill in here and there. Sometimes you won't. Sometimes you use too much. You'll know. Bam. Take another good size clump of it here. Lay it in like so. Perfect. Back around to our 90 degree mark. So now we have covered 180 degrees on the Waddington shank with blue flash. And it looks terrible, basically. <laughs> but it will come together. Now, to manage this stuff, because we're going to now turn it over, you're going to get it wet. So it sticks. So if any of it moves, it all moves. Because if you don't, there'll be pieces of flash all over the place. And they'll get in every, every time you wrap the thread, there'll be a new one poking out and all that stuff. So I'm going to turn it over. And you see, it stays relatively nice and contained as long as it's wet. Make sure it's good. So, I've put the blue on the top. It's a relatively dark pattern. I, or color. On the bottom, and most of the time, the stuff I fish, I like copper. Um, any particular reason why? Oh, just catches my eye. Uh, so, we're going to do the same exact thing we did with the blue in copper. Here we go. There's our 90 degree mark there. Last clump of flash here. And we tie it in. You just basically want to tie it in so that we're covering up that wad of stuff we put in there earlier. That big wad of Arctic box and all that kind of stuff. Gets a Perfect. But now you can see how fat it's actually going to stay in the water. It's a pretty good sized fly for having four materials on it now. I'm going to kind of halfway wrap it down and we're going to throw on a set of eyes here. And these are 530 seconds. Again, I'd probably use silver, maybe black. I'm going to put these underneath, again, angle the eyes, put on a couple, three, four wraps. You can then straighten them out. We don't want them falling off. Here we go. Now to finish this fly off, we're going to take some black schlappen, or their equivalent thereof, 
And I personally like, especially on larger flies, I personally like the webby stuff. The stuff at the bottom of the stem. The stuff that maybe, if we were tying a nice fly, we'd cut off. I like to start with that. Because that's going to give you almost like a marabou. And again, if any of that flash starts getting in your way, you can just lick it. Now I tied it in backwards. Shiny side, curved side toward me, so that when I start winding it, it goes on correctly. Um, I will cut the tip off. Again, three wraps for everything. You're out. <clears throat> Perfect. Cut this bad boy out of the way. Now, probably re-lick all this stuff and just mold, fold this back. Fold this stuff back, and here we go. And mainly the purpose of this schlep in here is to just cover up our thread. Maybe actually put a feather on there so you actually feel like you're fishing a fly. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, we've put little pieces of rabbit out the back and all that kind of good stuff. So we got about two and a half wraps of that real buggy, nasty stuff there. Just like that. And just like that, we lop that off. A thick thing. Put a few extra wraps for good measure. And we whip finish. And I whip finish with my fingers most of the time. And you've got to do at least two. I'll, sometimes three on these larger flies, three wouldn't hurt. It's not like you're trying to make a you know, the fly that looks like this, we're not trying to make a small head. I mean, that's the least of our concerns right now. Um, but you're going to see these wild flash has an advantage. Now our fly is basically done there. We look at it, and we have a 20 millimeter Waddington shank, and right now I've got about, what, five and a half, six inches of fly. 